Howdy y'all, Chris Bone here for Me It Off The Bone. Last night I, I saw that I had some leftover chicken thighs that I would I would have liked to do something with besides making like a traditional chicken salad or, or chicken sandwich or, or, or whatnot. Uh, what I was thinking about is doing uh, maybe like a croquette. Croquettes just leftover chicken molded into each other and then fried. Okay, great. Everyone knows what a croquette is. If you don't know, well, I'm gonna show you here in a second. But at the second, at the same time, I want to do something like I always do. I want to put my own little spin on it. Not only do I like croquettes, but I also like chicken cordon bleu. Chicken cordon bleu is like chicken that has Swiss cheese and ham shoved inside of it, and then that's breaded and fried. And that's one of my favorites as well. Well. I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I can mix the two. It'll be reverse chicken cordon bleu croquette. All right, hear me out. <laughs> I'm instead of the the uh, the ham and the cheese getting on the on the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the outside. I'm gonna put the cheese. I'm gonna make the croquette. Let me show you how to make the croquette, which you can eat by itself. It's delicious as it is. But I'm then gonna roll the croquette in. Uh, the Swiss cheese and then I'm gonna roll that with ham I'm gonna I'm gonna bread that up with panko breadcrumbs and then deep fry that I don't, I don't I don't see how I can go wrong I have never tried it before but hey that's what we're here for because I try new things all the time I have a hair on my camera I don't like that all right well <clears throat> let's get down to business Ingredients, of course, our panko. This is chicken stock. This is regular chicken stock. It, the, the regular recipe does ask for uh, onions, which I have right here, some garlic, which I'm gonna saute right now with some butter. Uh, it does ask for parsley. I didn't have any parsley, so I, this is actually homegrown um, cilantro, because I do like cilantro to give it a nice little Spanish kick to it. And I didn't have any, um, any bell pepper or any type of chili pepper, but I did have banana pepper. I'm not going to use quite this much. I just needed that much to uh, to, uh, to to chop up. We're going to need uh, just a tablespoon of the tomato paste, a couple of eggs for dredging. This is going to be what we're going to be rolling it in, and of course our chicken. Um, but right now we're just going to go ahead and get our we're going to get our uh, onions sautéing. Like so. Let's put you here. There you go. It seems like a, like a little bit, uh, a lot of butter, which I agree it is. But um, after this is done sauteing, uh, everything's gonna be put in here. So I don't mind a little bit extra butter to help everything. Kind of melt into each other. Add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. Put maybe a tablespoon of garlic in. Not a lot. cilantro oh, that's a great smell 
if you like cilantro. Be about a taste tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. on if you want you can take it off it doesn't really matter it's not gonna hurt nothing now like I said these are just three chicken uh, thighs so yes they're dark meat uh, you can use white meat dark meat doesn't really matter I'll put some more uh, I'll put some more um, stock in here And I'm doing this first because I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to let it cool down because I, I have to roll it. So I'm going to hurry up and get this all mixed up. And as it's cooling down, I'm going to make my roux. fire down a little bit and get my oil on to get that up to up to uh, up to about 350 360 degrees okay Wonderful. Hmm. Definitely tastes like cilantro. Awesome. I'll put this in the refrigerator um, for about maybe 10 minutes until I, until I can get my other ingredients ready for the uh, deep fry. 
Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up some of this, the uh, chicken stock. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of butter to it. And then we're gonna add a half a cup of flour. Where is my knife? If I need to add more, more butter or, or more flour, I'll just guesstimate, but it's about what I need right here. Oh, by the way, that noise you hear in the back, that's the, uh, I just washed that that pot where the the hot oil is in, and I guess I missed it. I missed drying a little bit of it. That's that's the uh, the water that's that's touching the grease that's starting to uh, boil up. Very loud and annoying sound. That's melted. If you didn't already know, this is called a roux, R-O-R-U-E, or R-U-E-X, or something like that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's French. This is a thickening agent for all gravies and soups. All it is, really, is flour and moisture. So, if you have a gravy that is really, really runny, get a little bit of butter, melt a little bit of butter with a little bit of flour, make it into about this consistency, then stir it in, uh, your gravy will, will come up quite nice. Like this came up quite nicely. It's almost, it's almost like, it's almost like a dough. Very, very wet dough, but still a dough. What I'm gonna do, take this, transfer it over to here, so it, it, it too can cool. Because I'm going to mix this in with the, um, with the chicken. I probably won't use all of it, but it's no big deal. It's only flour and butter. I don't need to use all of it. But it is on the hot side. I want that on there. And see how it comes right up? Doesn't stick or anything. Right. Wonderful. And you can hear the uh, the the oil has stopped being obnoxious. That means the temperature is getting up there. Just about. If you want to check, take a little ball like that. And drop it in. Almost there. Yeah, that's about right. Actually, what I'm gonna do, just to be on the safe side, is the oil is looking pretty decent, so I'm gonna take it off the heat. I'm gonna leave the heat on, but take the oil off the heat so I don't overcook my oil, I don't get too hot, so if I 
when I throw this in, it just doesn't automatically brown up after five seconds and, you know, then it's become like, you know, kind of burnt. All right. Now, this is where it's going to get kind of messy. Uh, I'm going to go grab the chicken and I'm going to mix the two of uh, these two together with my hands. So I'll probably put, put on my gloves. Incorporating this as much as I possibly can, as evenly as possible. And this is turning out really, really nice. Exactly what I wanted. Exactly what I wanted. The roux is getting the chicken to stick to itself. And it's going to help. Um, for, it's going to firm up under the, under the heat of the, uh, the fry. So it'll turn into like almost, I'm not going to say like a bread, but almost bready. Uh, it's going to be really, really nice. Okay. This is about done. Ready to roll. Looks great. Let me move it on back a little bit. I'll put this here. Let's move these guys up. Just need maybe about maybe a small golf ball size. Maybe, maybe actually probably even smaller. Well, I don't know. Because what I want to do, I want to. I'm gonna get the shape of maybe a finger length, like maybe a small hot dog. You see, and then I'm gonna take the cheese and just gonna wrap it around, and I'll take the ham and I'll wrap it around that. But this right here, all I have to do is bread this up and I could fry this up as a, as a croquette by itself. This is a croquette. This is what, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Let's get our eggs. all my croquettes grind up here and if I fry a little bit without the uh, the ham and cheese okay no problem just want to see if it actually that's the right size before I speak before I continue because I haven't done this before well I've made all of this before just haven't done this like this before I want to make sure that this is gonna be like the right the right size Like this. That 
is exactly, literally exactly what, what I wanted to look like. That was perfect. Now, if you have a toothpick that you might want to utilize, feel free. Huh. Well, that does look good. All right. That, that actually does look good. Well, that's the, that's going to be the, uh, I'm going to take this. I'm gonna chill it first uh, because uh, when if you chill it and stick stick it in the egg wash, the egg wash will hold on to it a little bit better. I'm also probably gonna dredge these in flour um, just a little bit because they're, they're kind of moist and uh, flat, the egg will, will hold on to them better if they're dredged in flour than, than of course the panko. Put it back down and then, uh, then fry it. These don't take long at all. But first off, I'm gonna do all these just to get them uniform and then start on on all the rest but that that's i just wanted you to see what what the end that end result is going to look like you can't look it does not you can't get better than that that's so awesome you could actually eat this right now everything everything's already cooked literally every, everything's cooked so you could eat it i you know i you know can now if you should is another matter but i mean it's up, up to you i mean some people you know, some people have some weird tastes and, and thin things. But, hey, I'm not one to judge. I'm, I'm not going to mention what they look like, but they're going to come out wonderful. I, I already know. All right, let's go get the flour to dredge. Want regular croquet, croquette? Dredge it in flour, very very lightly. Then we drop it in the egg. Usually it's a wet hand, dry hand technique, but it's gonna be really hard to do that with these because they're so delicate, because they just wanna fall off. Yeah, they just wanna, they just wanna fall. Very, very delicate. Kinda messy side too, so watch out. Easy to do, just I don't wanna there you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. I don't know if the camera catch that right now. Ugh. Let me see here. I'm just gonna wrap this in egg. Cause I don't think that I don't think I could dredge this in flour. Temperatures. But the egg likes to, doesn't want to stick to it, or the uh, panko doesn't want to stick to it that well. Hmm. How to get over that conundrum? 
Kok? I really hope that uh, that caught on camera. All that. And yes, I'm not gonna. I'm not leaving these in until they're a deep, deep dark brown. Because I'm gonna put them in the oven. But they look really, really nice. Besides my GoPro getting like overheated, it already turned off once on me. Um, I'm gonna, uh, everything's looking really, really good. I'm just gonna go ahead and do these for video's sake. The others I'm gonna, I'm gonna prepare and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, fry and then um, I'll, whatever I have to do with them. But th this, this gave me an idea of, of what to expect. Give you, I, give, gives you an idea of what to expect. Um, still a little bit hot. I will be trying both of these. Uh, try this little piece right here. Mm. Wow. Definitely a crunch. You can taste the chicken. I know that hint of cilantro. I don't get much of the pepper at all. I don't know if you heard that bell, but it's my doorbell. Anyway, these 
came out really really great ah, very delicate very crunchy mm. the insides nice and firm um besides being delicate but um it's kind of a creamy on the inside with the uh with the the heated roux which really firmed up really nicely Of course, these are the ones without the uh, the, um, the ham and cheese. Mm. Really, really nice. And yes, I didn't put the um, I didn't put these in the uh, in the oven. I might. If you put them in the oven at the two hundred degree mark for about maybe twenty minutes, you'll totally firm up the inside nicely. Um, you can eat them now, perfectly, right now, um, or you can firm up, firm them up even further. I'm curious on 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 this. Let me see. The cheese is already cheese is already uh, melting out. Oh wow! I am glad I thought of that. Wow. This is good. This is better. You got the chicken. You have the cheese. You have the ham. You have the crunch. It really does taste like a chicken cordon bleu. It does. It's so good. This tastes like a croquette with, with, with cilantro, which is awesome. This tastes like a chicken cordon bleu with a, with a hint of cilantro. I'm so, oh my goodness, I'm so happy I did this. It wasn't, it's not the easiest recipe in the world. It's probably not the shortest either. But if, if you if you feel like taking a shot at it, please let me know what you think. These all came out really, really nice. Mm. Wonderful. Thanks for watching. My name is Chris Bone. This is Meat Off the Bone. If you have any um, requests, let me know. If you have any comments, let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Y'all, thanks a lot for watching. Y'all take care.